Welcome to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about some fragrance buying tips, so stay tuned for that. And if you like the content guys, hit that like and subscribe button, I do appreciate it. Before we get into the content guys, leave a comment down below. What's your scent of the day? Today I think I'm going to wear Interlude Man. It's kind of a bit of a colder, gloomier day and I feel like the incense will really work well with the weather. So tip number one is probably one that you've heard a lot, and that is don't blind buy anything. I mean, of course you can blind buy things. I blind bought things. People do it for fun, and that's fine, but unless you're willing to lose the money, it's not a good idea to blind buy something. Even if, say, I bought something like this, brand new, sprayed it once, decided I didn't like it, and then wanted to sell it to somebody, you lose a lot of money already. I couldn't sell this for like $135, even with only one spray missing. So the problem is that you end up losing a lot of money that way, and it's just not a good idea. Again, I said I do it sometimes, I do it for fun, but generally I don't do it. Um, which brings me to the next hint or tip, which is sample things first. Now, there's a lot of ways you can go about doing this. If you do have Sephora, if you have like, um, you know, any other kind of store that has fragrances, a lot of times you can get samples first. And a lot of times you can get them for free. Sephora, if you have a good one, is really great for this. They will give you three, sometimes more samples of anything that they have. And it's usually a good enough sample that you can wear it two or three times. Another good thing you can do is get uh, these discovery sets. Now, some people don't like them because oftentimes price per milliliter is not as good as, say, buying a bottle. The thing is that, for example, with this one, the Amouage set, you get all of their best sellers, and I think this was around $35, and it's enough that you can wear each of them two or three times, right? So it gives you a good idea of what the fragrance is all about. The other thing that you can do is buy decants. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Um, there's people on Facebook groups um, that sell decants and of course if you do that make sure they are a reputable seller. Um, there is actually a legit check webpage where you can ask people who have bought if anyone's bought from them or they have a list of all the people that have been confirmed this guy is a good seller. Um, so that's one thing you can do. You can also go on eBay now, as always, eBay is a little bit risky. You want to be aware of a number of things, and one of the things I look for is a higher seller rating. I usually would not buy a decant off anyone who has less than 99% uh, seller approval or buyer approval, and someone who's made a lot of sales as well, typically. And so, in that case, I feel more comfortable. There's also people that are clearly, they have these huge shops, and they're clearly doing some kind of a business. Those people, I also feel, are a little bit more uh, reputable. So that's definitely a way that you can get samples as well. So the next tip is, I think, also one that a lot of people don't know about, is that you don't usually have to pay retail. Certainly there are times that um, it can be hard to find something or retail is generally um, something you're going to have to pay and it does happen once in a while. But in general, it's very possible to get a lot of fragrances for very inexpensive price or at least much better and again this is a lot of Facebook groups there are people that sell um, really reliable people that sell fragrances for um, significantly less so I bought this this um, brand new in box I bought this Wajan Parfums de Marly and if you go on the website I think it's like $320 which is a lot of money for this fragrance now don't get me wrong I love this fragrance it's a good fragrance and I was almost prepared to pay um, full price for this one, uh, but I got this for around $140 from a very reputable trader on the Facebook groups and honestly that saved me a lot of money, right? That's basically half price, which is a really, really great deal. The next tip um, probably goes best with sampling, which is try things more than once, okay? So there's a lot of fragrances that I just loved on first sniff. I knew right away the first time I smelled it, I love this fragrance, this is amazing. And, you know, fragrances like Black Phantom, 
Blackmail is a recent example of one that I loved right away. Um, and there's just, there are fragrances like that. But there's also a lot of fragrances that are a little bit maybe more complex or maybe you don't smell it right away, but after wearing it a couple times, you really start to love it and enjoy it, right? And so Galloway is a good example. I didn't really like it at first, but now it's one of my favorite sort of fresh, clean fragrances. Very nice for the office setting or whatever, um, when you want to smell fresh and clean. I think it's a really great, nice musk scent. Very straightforward and simple, but very well done. And I do enjoy it quite a bit. But the other aspect of that is that you might really like the opening, that initial burst, but the dry down, which is usually the longest phase of the fragrance, depending on some of them don't last that long. Some of them, um, you might not like the dry down at all. And that definitely happens with this fragrance with a really nice opening, but the dry down just doesn't work for you, or it's not something that you enjoy. And so that ends up being a bit of a problem. And that's another reason why it's always good to try it first. And the other, Part of that is you always want to try it on skin as well. On paper, a lot of fragrances smell amazing. I mean, you can maybe assume that on paper it smells exactly like what the perfumer had envisioned it to smell like, right? Um, but it, the pH balance in people's skin, it does act differently, right? So you will get different notes that might be stronger on your skin. It definitely smells different on different people because it mixes again with that pH chemistry in your skin. And so actually wearing something is fairly critical to understanding if you actually like it. And also you may get terrible performance that you find um, makes it not worthwhile. There are fragrances out there that people get terrible performance from and other people get fantastic performance. And then there's ones that people, you know, get that last forever on their skin and then other people, they just don't last as long. And you always have to consider whether or not it's worth it. Like, a fragrance that I have that I consider to be fairly poor performing is the one EDP, but I love that fragrance. So for me, it's not a big problem if it lasts five or six hours, and then if I'm still out, I can reapply it or whatever the case may be, right? And so for me, then it's worth it, but it's always something you want to know is how it actually performs on your skin. I can wear a fragrance, I can tell you how it performs on my skin, but I can pretty much guarantee it's probably not going to be exactly the same. You might get different projection, you might get different longevity, but it's not going to perform exactly the same. It just generally doesn't do that, right? Another piece of advice is unless you're trying to build a collection, you should probably only buy fragrances you love. So especially when I first started, I bought a bunch of things and some of them I didn't wear that much after buying them. And honestly, it's a very expensive hobby and it's a very fast way to spend a lot of money. So unless you're a collector and you want to have these huge uh, beautiful collections, which are really, some people have some very amazing collections. Unless that's your goal, um, it's really best to save your money for things that you would rate at least a nine, right? Something that you really, really love. And if you really want to build a small, tight collection, it's best to have only the fragrances that you would rate a 10, right? And so that takes a little time, a little bit of testing to find out what it is you really like. Um, but it is worth it in the end, again, unless you want to spend a lot of money. But that comes to my next point is that again, on a lot of these Facebooks, you can swap fragrances. So if you find, and this totally does happen, there'll be fragrances that you love, you wear, and for whatever reason, maybe you wear half the bottle and you decide, you know what, I, I need something new. This one, I just don't quite love it anymore or don't find myself reaching for it very often. Oftentimes you can find somebody else who really wants that fragrance and they will swap it for something else that they have that they don't want anymore. So a lot of the times it works out that you can at least try something new or get something else that you think you would get more use out of. So there's a lot of different ways to sort of minimize the amount that you're actually spending. So again, unless money's not an option, this is a very expensive hobby and it is best to be a little bit more cautious with your spending and, and try things out, test them out, and um, find a few ways to save a little bit of money. And my last bit of advice is that cost or price does not necessarily equate with the quality. There's a lot of expensive fragrances that I really don't like. And there's a lot of cheap fragrances that I enjoy a lot. So don't be like, oh, I'm not gonna try this. It's like such cheapy or whatever, it's just whatever. I mean, I think this one, which I really enjoy, you can get this one 
really inexpensively online. There's some really good Mont Blanc fragrances that you can also get online for like 30 bucks. And Ancre Noir Sport, which I think is a good one, you can get for like 30 bucks. There's a lot of really nice fragrances that you can get cheap. But again, not all cheap fragrances are equal. Some of them are cheap for a good reason. They're not very good. But the same goes with expensive fragrances. There's a lot of expensive fragrances that just aren't that good. Um, and there's, you know, expensive fragrances that are fantastic. You need to decide for yourself if it's worth the money to you. And again, that's where it goes into sampling and trying things out. Anyways, guys, those are my beginner tips. Definitely tips that I wish I had known uh, going right into the game probably would have saved me a few hundred dollars. Do you guys have any fragrance buying tips for beginners that I missed out on? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.